can you believe that college football, a game that now draws millions of viewers each Saturday, began with humble origins over a century ago? The sport's evolution into a spectacle we know today is a fascinating journey marked by key developments, influential programs, and a dramatic shift in financial dynamics. College football's roots trace back to the late 19th century. The first recorded game took place in 1869 between Princeton and Rutgers, with Rutgers emerging victorious 6-4, a game that was a bore and more of a resemblance of soccer than the gridiron clashes that we know today. Over the next few decades, football spread across campuses, adopting elements from rugby and evolving into the American version of the game we know today. The tradition of playing games on Saturdays has its origins in the early days of college football. The sport was primarily played on Saturdays because it was a day off for students, aligning with the academic calendar and allowing for maximum attendance. This scheduling also became an integral part of the college experience, with Saturday games often serving as a central social event for students, alumni, and local communities. Students at the campus not only had an opportunity to watch their team take on a rival, but they also had a chance to network and build relationships with other students, alumni, and local businesses. The consistency of the Saturday schedule helped build a tradition and a rhythm that still persists to this day. The transformation of college football into a major spectacle began in earnest in the mid-20th century. The introduction of television broadcasting in the 1950s and 60s brought college football into living rooms across the country, significantly increasing its popularity. Sports media in the world of television completely changed the way we looked at college football. Prior to this, most of the rivalries were very localized and centralized around locations. Prior to TV and the coverage of college football, most of the coverage of the teams were very localized with local small newspapers or even the college newspapers covering the teams and key players. Most of the country, even the NFL, would not even know of half the players playing in the league until the invention of sports media on television. The establishment of the NCAA Football Bowl Subdivision in 1978 and the introduction of the Bowl Championship Series, or BCS, in 1998 further amplified the sports profile by creating a more structured postseason and national championship format. We have a whole video about bowl games and the college football championship, which we'll link in this video at the end. But overall, this was a huge change for college football. The rise of ESPN, Fox Sports, and other sports networks in the 1980s and 90s played a crucial role in the sports commercialization of college football. These networks not only provided extensive coverage of the games, but also created programming dedicated to college football, including highlights, analysis, and recruitment coverage. The financial impact was profound, and media rights deals became major revenue sources for universities and athletic departments. Television contracts have revolutionized college football by injecting enormous sums of money into the sport, transforming it into a major financial enterprise. The lucrative deals, often worth billions over several years, have been pivotal roles in shaping the landscape of college athletics. Networks like ESPN, CBS, and Fox compete fiercely for broadcasting rights, leading to unprecedented revenue streams in major conferences and programs. This influx of cash allows schools to invest in state-of-the-art facilities, attract top-tier athletes, and offer substantial recruitment packages. Being on TV has been a driving force of students deciding to pick a university or college that they want to play at. In recent years, teams like Alabama and Georgia have dominated the college football landscape. Alabama, under head coach Nick Saban, had been a powerhouse throughout the 2000s, 2010s, and 2020s winning multiple national championships, and consistently competing at the highest level. Georgia, with Kirby Smart at the helm, had made significant impacts in winning the national championship multiple times and maintaining a strong presence in the SEC. 
Historically, programs like Penn State, Ohio State, and Notre Dame have made substantial contributions to college football's legacy. Penn State under Joe Paterno was a dominant force throughout the 1960s into the early 2000s, known for their strong defenses and consistent performances. Notre Dame has had a rich tradition of numerous championships and has remained one of the most storied programs in college football. Believe it or not, but in the early days of college football, the Ivy League with their teams like Princeton and the University of Pennsylvania were dominant forces. These institutes were among early adopters of college football and enjoyed success early on. Princeton, for instance, was a powerhouse in the late 19th and early 20th century, and UPenn enjoyed periods of dominance and popularity throughout the 1900s. The financial landscape of college football has undergone a dramatic transformation, particularly within the recent decades. The infusion of money from television contracts, sponsorship deals, and booster contributions have reshaped the sport. Programs with the most resources have been the ones who have been able to invest heavily in facilities, coaching staff, and recruitment, creating a disparity between powerhouse programs and others. The move to the Power 5 conferences, ACC, Big 10, Big 12, Pac-12, and SEC, has further intensified financial divide. These conferences have secured lucrative television deals and bowl game affiliations, enhancing the program's visibility and revenue streams. The creation of the college football playoffs in 2014, which replaced BCS, also contributed to the commercialization of the sport by adding an extra layer of high-stakes competition and revenue generation. NIL, name image likeness rights, which allow players to profit off their personal brand, have been introduced and added a new dimension to the financial landscape of college football. While this has provided players with opportunities for compensation, it has also increased the complexity and competitiveness of recruiting as programs with larger financial resources can offer bigger and more lucrative deals. From its modest beginnings in the late 19th century to its status as an American spectacle, college football's journey is a testament to its enduring appeal and cultural significance. The tradition of Saturday games, the evolution of the commercial powerhouse, and the rise in dominant programs reflect the sport's dynamic nature and its ability to captivate audiences across generations. From the early days of dominance from the Ivy League, to the powerhouse SEC we see today, college football is definitely a different sport than it was in its early days. Let us know your thoughts on college football. Do you think the NIL is a good thing or a bad thing for the sport? Let us know in the comments below your favorite team as well. We appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Believable Truths.